The Hundred Year Old Secret, Chapter 5. Maybe we can solve some of the cases in the casebook, Xander said. Aunt Mary beamed at him and Zena. All our resources, said Miss Brown, are at your disposal. One of our members is a chemist, and he can help with analyze, analysts. And there's time for that later, Aunt Mary said. Now let's celebrate the newest members of the SPFD. I think we better go, Zena said reluctantly. Our mother is expecting us. Oh, we've already gotten word to her, Mr. Brown said. We've planned a small celebration, dears, said Aunt Mary. All of us in the Society for Preservation of Famous Detectives would like to welcome you to our little group. <coughs> Except for him, Zena thought, as she watched the red-headed boy slip outside the side door. She didn't need to be a famous detective to know that Andrew Watson didn't like them one bit. When is it going to be my turn, Zander asked his sister the next day. Zena was flopped onto her twin bed against the far wall and had been hogging the casebook for hours. Pretty soon, she said, but she seemed in no hurry to pass the book over to him. Zander sat on the small chair by the window and stared out the gloomy, rainy Saturday afternoon. He sighed and watched a raindrop hurry down the pane of glass and catch up with another one. He took his eyes away from the window. I can't believe I'm so bored that I'm watching raindrop races, he said. Is there anything in there we could try to solve? I wish, Zena said, but these cases took places over a hundred years ago. There's one about a ruby that someone lost, and then some weird note about a toeless guy. Stuff like that. It's mostly just notes and sketches. I'll tell you if I find anything. Mom said we have to do something cultural this afternoon anyway, remember? Why don't you look for an art exhibit or something? Xander groaned. <sighs> they picked up the newspaper and was resting on a tiny wooden end table. During their first days in London, their mother had made them go see the Rosetta Stone, a huge landscape painting, and Greek sculptures, and Xander didn't want to go to another museum the whole rest of the year. But Zena was different. She could go to museums every day for a week, and then wake up the next day and ask to go to another one. Xander scanned down the page. Medieval illuminations, he read. Wire sculptures by some guy with a name I can't pronounce. Paintings by Nigel Bathson. Nature photographs. What? Zena interrupted him. Nature photographs. No, the other one, Zena said. Paintings by whom? Nigel Bathson. Xander read again. Wow, Zena said. This is amazing. Look at this. Xander got up to join her, and she angled the casebook toward him. He peered at the old-fashioned handwriting as Zena took the newspaper. Nigel Batson, Xander read out loud, girl in a purple hat, notice missing Thursday last. There were some more notes at the bottom of the next page. It was a notation in some handwriting, but the slight different shade of ink, as though some time had elapsed between the inscriptions. Case abandoned to pursue intriguing problem of a lion's mane. They both sat back. It's got to be the same guy, Zena said. How many artists named Nigel Batson can... There be. And look, they even mentioned the same painting in the newspaper. She ran her finger down the column. See, it says, sadly, Batson's most important work is still missing from the collection. This painting, Girl in a Purple Hat, is a portrait of a little girl about eight seated on a wicker chair in a summer garden. What? Zena broke in. That's the same picture as in the notebook. Duh, Zena said. That's what I just said. Anyway, the newspaper said the painting was discovered missing a century ago, and has never been recovered. Fortunately, a copy had previously been made. Look, there it is. They bent their heads over the newspaper. The grainy picture showed a pretty girl with blonde curls and a bright purple hat, sitting on a chair with flowers and shrubs behind her. The contrast between the color of the hat and the girl's green eyes was striking, even in the newspaper. Zena went on reading. Although it is claimed the copy could never capture all the charm of the original, it at least gives an idea of what the missing painting looked like. Note the model's slight sulky expression, which makes the painting stand out from the sometimes overly sweet view of childhood frequently depicted in the portraits of the era. Xander sat back on his heels. Wouldn't it be awesome if we could find that painting? I mean, isn't it amazing that we saw the name of the artist in the paper? It seems like it was meant to be. That would be cool, Zena said. But it's been missing for so long. Where would we begin to look? We have point something. We have something that could help, Zander pointed out. We have this. 
He gestured at the casebook. The notes of the great Sherlock Holmes. They gave us a head start. Look here. His list of names. Wife, Margarita, Margaret, Children, Abner, Cedric, Robert. And what does this mean, do you think? He pointed at the word Tensbury, scrawled in the corner. A little further down was a sketch of a dragon that seemed to be curled up on its itself with its tail in its mouth. Zena took a notebook from him. I don't know, Zena. Those names could be anything, and it looks like a dragon is just a doodle. It says that the painting was noticed missing on Thursday, but that's not really a big help. Come on, Zena, Xander was impatient. We've watched hundreds of mystery shows on TV. We always figured out the bad guy before the detective does, and I'm always reading detective books. Besides, we have Sherlock Holmes genes. Doesn't that mean anything? Zena hesitated before answering. It could be dangerous. Are you kidding? Xander laughed. Look for a picture of a girl in a purple hat could be dangerous? How could finding the answer to a hundred-year-old secret be dangerous? Zena glanced at the newspaper again. We wouldn't have much time, she said, and Xander held his breath, knowing she was considering it. The exhibit opens next Friday at the museum called the Victoria and Albert, and then a few days later it leaves on a worldwide tour. This guy Bassison has gotten really popular again all of a sudden, the paper says. Xander nodded. We owe it to him, he said, rubbing his finger over the initial stamped on the cover. Not to Bassett. We owe it to our great, great, great grandfather. He solved most of the mysteri mysteries he set out to solve. It's not his fault he had to leave this one before it was finished. Let's see if we can figure it out for him. Zena looked at her brother. From someplace deep inside her came a sense of family pride she hadn't known she possessed. Wouldn't it be amazing if they could solve some of the great Sherlock Holmes case for him? She stood up. Okay, let's find the painting before the art show opens, she said or at least before the exhibit goes on tour around the world. Let's make sure it includes this time, just as Sherlock Holmes himself had found it. Xander stood too, and held out his hand. Zena took it, and they shook on a deal. Now, said Xander, where do we start? Chapter 6 Good question, Zena thought. Maybe it was too tough a case. Maybe that was the real reason their great-great-great-grandfather had dropped it, not because a more urgent problem had popped up. What could two kids do when the Sherlock Holmes had failed? Xander didn't seem troubled by these doubts. Okay, he said, let's make a plan. Go on, you know you're dying to make a list. Zena pulled out a piece of paper and ignored his tease about how much she liked to make lists. First, let's find out everything we know we can about Bastion and his family, she said. She wrote, one family. Xander nodded. Maybe we can find out where he kept his painting and who could have taken one. And let's find out the model's name, he said. Maybe she left a diary or letters or something that could help. Zena wrote down, two, model's identity. She tapped the end of her pencil on a paper. Let's see if we can take a look at any of his other paintings and drawings, she said. Maybe we can find some clues. Good idea, Zander said. And then what? We'll just have to wait and see what we turn up, Zena said. There were some advantages to working in the modern day. One of them was the internet. Xander tried to look over Zena's shoulder as she typed. He actually jiggled her arm. Whoa, cowboy, Zena said as she pressed the print. Quit calling me that, Xander said, but she ignored him as usual. First, you have to listen to stuff about Bastion, she said. It's mostly about his paintings and not a lot about his life, but there's some pretty interesting information. The printer stopped whirling. And Zena took out sheets and smacked them on the desk to even them up. Okay, she said, settling on her boat. Her long legs crossed in front of her. Number one, Nigel Baston married a lady named Margaret Sawyer. They had three sons. The family lived in the country in Hertfordshire, wherever that is. And they heard they hardly ever had visitors because Baston was really shy. I think he had agoraphobia. Ah, Xander nodded. He had seen the word in the dictionary. The definition popped into his mind. Agoraphobia, fear of open spaces from the word Greek agora, meaning marketplace, and phobia, meaning fear. Now generally intended to mean fear of traveling away from familiar surroundings. Show off, Zena said. Okay, number two. When he died, the family was really poor, so his wife decided to sell some of his paintings. But when she went to get Girl in Purple Hat out of storage in their home to send to a gallery in London where more buyers could see it, the painting was gone. Was anyone arrested? Zena rifled through the pages. It doesn't say, so I bet not. Number three, the actual date of the theft remained uncertain because Miss Batson said the picture was in storage. 
soon after it was finished, and she hadn't gone looking for it until years later. The police questioned all the servants, but everyone denied knowing anything. One of the boys had grown up and gotten married, and the other two were away at boarding school. The police asked them all about it, but it didn't learn anything there either. Xander reached for the papers. He leafed through them and looked up. No wonder this case was so tough. The painting could have been stolen long before anyone noticed it. It was missing. He dropped the paper back on his bed. True, Zena said. That does make it harder. So now what? Xander asked. Instead of answering, Zena reached for the phone book and looked up at him. It was a long shot, but at least it was a place to start. She dialed the first number in the column. No answer. She dialed another number. This time, it rang only a few times before a man picked up. Xander leaned in, and Zena angled the phone so he could listen to. Hello, Mr. Batson, she said. Speaking, a bris brisk male voice replied. Um, you don't know me, but my name is Zena Holmes. You're American, aren't you? Yes, sir, she said. I'm... I could tell from your accent, he, inter he interrupted. Accent? She thought. I don't have an accent. He's the one with the accent. I'm here with my family, and I was interested in finding out more about the painter Nigel Batson. Are you related to him? Yes, dear, the man said. I am indeed. He was my great-great-great-grandfather. I never knew him, of course. Yes, Xander whispered, pumping his fist in the air. I was wondering, Zena said, and then paused. She hadn't thought of what to ask next. Her eyes telegraphed a help to Xander. Ask him what his favorite painting is, he whispered. What's your favorite painting Boston painted, he, she asked. Oh, that's easy, he said. Abner at the fair. Abner was Nigel's son and my great-great-grandfather. Basson didn't complete many paintings, and that's the only large oil of my ancestor. It was always nice to feel connected to a bit of history. Know what I mean? Yes, I do, Zena replied, thinking of the case book. The man went on. Nigel was a very withdrawn man, you know. In fact, a historian once said that the way the Ferris painted in Abner's portrait is wrong from the time period. It would have looked old-fashioned even then. So Basson must have painted his son in the garden, and then added a fair he remembered from his own childhood as the background. He chuckled. People say we English people are eccentric. I don't know if that's true, but Nigel Bastin certainly was. This is a good, Zena thought. Very good. She took a deep breath and tried to sound casual. And the one with the girl, the missing painting? Ah, yes, he said. Girl in the purple hat. A lovely thing, if the copy can believe, be believed. Do you have any guesses about what happened to it? Afraid not, my dear. Why, I can't even imagine who might have been the model. Now that was interesting. If Nigel Baston didn't have any daughters, and if he didn't like meeting new people, who could the girl in the painting have been, Zena wondered. Then she realized the man on the phone was saying something. I'm sorry, Zena asked. I wanted to know if you had any more questions, the man said. Zena turned to Xander, who shrugged. Not right now, she said. But may I call you back if I think of something else? Certainly, he said, and hung up. Try another number, Zena suggested, but they struck out. There weren't many Bastons in the phone book. A few were at home, and the others had never heard of Nigel Baston. I guess he might as well give up, Xander said, not meaning it. He knew that once Zena set her mind to something, she wouldn't quit. Her father called her a bulldog. Zena picked up the newspaper and scanned the About Town section again. There's an art gallery that has some Baston sketches. Let's check it out. Okay, Xander agreed. And Mom will be thrilled that we did something cultural. I sure will. They both turned around at their mother's voice. What cultural activity were you planning on doing? While Xander explained, Zena jotted down the address of the gallery. That sounds fine. I'll walk you to the ba bus stop, their mother said. Oh, Mom, don't whine, Xander. I just want to make sure you don't get lost. They all put on their raincoats and stood at the bus stop in the drizzle. When the bus arrived, their mother got on with them and asked the driver some questions while Zena and Xander found seats and pretended not to know her. The driver will tell you where to get off, she called back to them with a big smile. And you get the bus back on the other side of the street from the gallery. Fine, Mom, thanks, Zena sounded as cheery as she could so that Mom would get off, and with a big wave at them, she did. I wish you wouldn't treat us like kids, Xander grumbled. Although there weren't many Londoners famous double-decker buses on the road anymore, riding buses through the city was still fun. London was so different from home. Xander loved seeing old buildings right next to brand new ones, and the neat-looking, bulgy, black taxi cabs zipping around. He leaned his forehead against the window, looking out at the drizzly day. It was still confusing to ride on the left side of the street, 
Sometimes, when they went around the corner, he thought the driver had gotten mixed up and were going to have a head-on collision with another car. People walked under umbrellas wearing raincoats and boots. Everything was gray and dull. The raincoats, the store windows obscured by rain, the expressions on people's faces. That was why, when a sudden flash of purple crossed his line of sight, he didn't even realize what it was at first. He was just surprised to see a color, but then he focused more closely. Was it? Could it be? Yes, it was. Zena, he cried. Hush, she said. Everyone's staring at you. But Xander kept his eyes on the girl who was darting under awnings and dodging the raindrops, holding her colorful hat on her head with one hand. Even in the gray light of a drizzled day, he could see the ringlets under the hat were bright golden blonde. Look, he said, pointing out the window. What? Zena asked. It's her, Xander half rose from the seat. It's the girl in the purple hat. End of chapter 6.